Welcome back guys to the Spurgeon Piper. This is Wilson with you. This week we have another tobacco review and it's the last one of 2023. But it's a special one. Partly because it's Christmas Sea and, and partly because it's a, a series of blends I really, really love and enjoy. And that is Sutliff's Kringle Flake 2023 edition. Now, uh, again, I've, I've loved this series since it first came out. I've been a big fan. It's what I budget for in the beginning of the year, making sure I have enough money set aside to get a handful of these blends or these tins. And so I'm excited to cover this. Uh, as always, I wanna give you uh, the, the background of the blend. I wanna give you a look at it. And then, uh, especially this time, I have some good notes on the blend and, and try to give you some comparisons to past years. So let's begin by going to thecountrysquire.com for the background. I'm not going to tobaccoreviews.com because they don't have this up yet, at least that I've seen. So um, on the back of the tin, it does say, age 23 years, U.S. grown Red Virginias are mixed with very special tobacco, stoved Caterini. This unique ingredient brings the mellow sweetness of stoved tobacco to the herbal oriental. Uh, finally, the mixture is boldly spiced with Perique from 2003, the last of this stock that has graced the series since 2020. So you could see reasons why this blend is uh, special and, and maybe more special than other the, the other blends or releases that will come after this year. It's 2003 Perique. That's very nice. 20 year old Perique, uh, 10 year old Red Virginias, and then it has that Caterini. And if you're not familiar with Caterini, uh, it is this, uh, it's a special leaf, oriental leaf that is, uh, that Sutliff has just recently uh, become uh, acquainted with. They've had their hands on it. It's only been used in special releases that they've had. And it is a type of oriental that gives a, a more distinct flavor. So, uh, you know, we will see how this blend matches up some, to some of the other ones um, in the Kringle Flake line. But this is the first one that has oriental in it. You can get it right now for $18.99 at the Country Squire, and it is available other places as well, possibly even cheaper. I like to support brick and mortar stores. I encourage you to do the same, uh, but I will stress it is available, and this time, I'm not mistaken. It's actually available. I just double checked to make sure. So guys, you, you can get your hands on it. This is not a limited edition that just ran off the shelves in, in an hour or less. Uh, it's, it's something you can jump on and uh, enjoy yourself if you so decide to. So with that said, let's go ahead and get a look at the blend. Well, here you are guys with Kringle Flake of 2023 and opening it up, I have rubbed out one of the flakes. Um, they did come quite uniform in, in the tin. Um, I, they do give a good presentation, uh, but here you are, as you can see, uh, it is quite, uh, a, quite a thick flake, um, thicker than say like Cordell and Dills often is, um, especially their Red Virginia Flakes. Um, easy to tear apart, as you can tell, but you do need to see the distinctions of the leaf components in it. Um, it definitely needs to be dried out. I, I saw someone make a note that it is on the dry side. I definitely don't have that problem. Um, this is on the wet side. It needs to be dried out. Uh, take your pick on how you want to solve that issue. You can just let it air dry for a while or take some off, rub it out, put it on a napkin and cook it in the microwave for like 10 seconds, whatever you wanna do, but it does need to be dried out ideally, just a bit. Uh, but other than that, it smells great. You can smell the fermenting, uh, or fermentation, which is wonderful. Um, it's, a, it's a pleasant smoke as always. All right, so look at the blend. I, I do wanna show you what came before, just so this is in your mind as you're watching this video. Uh, 2019 is when it began, and it first uh, started with a pure red Virginia uh, blend and I love that and frankly it may be one of my favorites because I'm a I'm a Virginia purist at times where I enjoy uh, j Just the pure red Virginia flavors that come from the leaf itself and, and they did a fabulous job It's probably still my favorite. I miss 2020 but then in 2021, 2022, the, the blends are pretty much identical uh, and they are Red Virginia and Perique and it's that 2003 Perique. So that's what we had the past two years. And then again, this year we have this uh, Red Virginia Perique Caterini edition. I have it loaded up in my dark ale. And so I'll go ahead and light it up again and we'll talk more about it. So let me note on 
one of the negatives. So this may be one of the only negatives I, I have really to, to make note of. Uh, it, I've, I've tried this blend in about four pipes now and different size pipes, different, uh, different, uh, bent pipes, straight pipes, uh, you know, so a variety and everyone gave me tongue bite. Um, part of the problem is this blend just needs to dry out. So I am a, a very impatient man. And oftentimes I do not wait to dry out my blends when they need to be dried out. So I'm, I want to take the blame on it. I'm not, I'm not going to put this necessarily on the, on the blend itself so much, but it does need to be dried out and it does give some tongue bite. However, in my rat raised dark ale, I do have a filter in it and that is really helping. So I, I'll make note of that. If you are someone who does not mind a filter and I am trying out a new filter that I will cover here soon, uh, that, uh, I'm really enjoying, uh, I, I would encourage you to use that and it will help with that process with the tongue bite. So off the cuff, flavors I love, notes I love, notes that are reminiscent of almost all three of the past former ones that I've tried. Uh, the 2019, 2021, 2022. Uh, first off, you have the, uh, the, the, the red Virginia and the Perik just, just coming forward. Uh, I'll be honest, I'm not proficient enough to, to divide the, the notes fully from this aged 20 year Perique from the aged 10 year Red Virginia. Uh, Virginia, Red Virginia especially, and Perique have some similar, uh, so, so, some, some similar components or flavors that come forth out of these uh, types of blends uh, and, and processes. Uh, you, you have your prunish, uh, red, rich, fruity flavors that's coming forward. Uh, you you have earthiness that's more Virginia. You have vinegariness. Oh, the vinegariness of this, like the other blends, that definitely comes out. I think that's more the red Virginia for sure. Uh, you you have uh, some muskiness. I'm really enjoying that. I don't know where that's coming from. It could be both because of the agedness. But you ever open a a wine bottle and have that musk, especially when it's aged, uh, that you're getting that. I love that. It's great. I know it's going to be a good a good bowl of uh, tobacco when I smell that, so I'm really enjoying that. It's coming forward. And then Perique obviously has that Perique spice, peppery spice. I mean that you could be a novice and you know what you're, you're smoking, right? You, you can you can point it out in a blend. So that that's coming forward as well. Those are the immediate things that I, I note because I'm well acquainted with this uh, this series. But then that Caterini is noticeable. And that's <coughs> that's where we get distinct from the other uh, additions of this blend. Mm. Ah, so good. So, Caterini. The character is a little different from other Oriental blends. I've tried other Oriental, like Virginia Oriental blends. Uh, Bijou is a good example of this. Mountain Flower uh, of the... Cornell and Dill release, uh, you, you, you know, you get the, the herbal, uh, floral taste notes and those are there. So that is there. You get this herbal, you get the floral notes from the Orientals, but then it has this, uh, creamy note to it that, that really is sticking out. You're probably getting some uh, more earthy notes from it as well. But that is that is something else that's coming into the picture. That's not, of course, wasn't wasn't part of the other ones. Uh, but I'm really enjoying that. It's another just layer of this this blend. Yeah. So uh, it's 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 very uh, it's more in depth maybe than the other ones. Uh, the age you could just tell you're smoking an age blend, and I've said that with the past, uh, especially the past two that I reviewed. I didn't review the 2019. Um, I did review 2022 and 2021, and I've said it with both. You know you're smoking something that was aged, and it's really coming out. The quality is excellent. Uh, again, I, I, I don't. This is the blend I look forward to most in the year because I know I'm not going to be disappointed. I haven't been so far. Even with 2022 release, uh, some were disappointed that it was so similar to 2021. I get it, but I was still happy because I, I really enjoyed both. So. I'm happy with it. Uh, if 
if I was going to give a comparison, obviously you're getting into the realm of the, the whole series. You're, you're going to get a lot of similar flavors. Of course, the, the, uh, this release is going to have a, the extra, uh, Katarini, excuse me. My mind would just went, went blink there. You're going to have the Katarini edition there and with the floral, the creamy herbal notes. Um, if you like Oriental and you like those things, you're going to be a happy camper. I, even if you don't, so much go for oriental blends you're still going to be content with it if if you like rich red virginia and rich perique blends it's fabulous um, i i highly encourage you to pick some up so let let, let me give you my score on this i would give this uh, nine out of ten uh it's it's high up there look i i love red virginias uh and i love perique and the oriental just adds an extra component to this i really enjoy it's it's more intricate so I, I, I don't know if I could even put it above the others so much. Uh, I think I might still have the 2019 as the top. This is the closest thing to red, the uh, McClellan's 5100 that I have tried to this day. Um, and, and for that, I'm, I'm, I'm real thrilled with it. Uh, actually, there's one other blend, but you can't get to it. And I'm not even going to talk about it. But, but so that, that comes the closest. But these other three blends, including this year, uh, they're, they're gold. Uh, I, I like them. When it comes to just the Red Virginia alone, even this year's, I would say, boy, that takes me back to trying McClellan's 5100. Uh, the, ke the vinegary, ketchupy flavor is still there, or the note. I shouldn't call it a flavor so much. Uh, the, the, the note, the character is still there. Yeah, you had the Perique and the Oriental coming in, but still, you, you, you know that's air in, in the area. And we have a lot of blends that were made with Red Virginia 20, or 5100 from McClellan's, and so uh, it's, it's going to recall those to mind maybe make you nostalgic if you really were enjoying those or enjoying that blend and, and many did. So uh, you can tell how high I'm in on it. I'm, I'm gonna recommend it. Uh, it's, it's a top blend. Uh, next week, I am going to give you my top blends of the year. So uh, I, I mentioned that because I'm gonna go, get, go ahead and give you a spoiler alert. This will be amongst them, uh, I, no question. So uh, I would encourage you to give it a try. I really enjoy it. I think you will be a fan. Buy some, put some away, give some to loved ones, whatever you would like to do. Uh, decorate with them because, you know, uh, tis the season. So there you have it, guys. Give, let me know your thoughts below if you've tried it. And uh, I, I look forward to hearing how others compare it to former releases. That's all I have, guys. I hope you're doing well. I hope your Christmas season is going smoothly. And we will talk to you very soon.